morning. Hi. And then they're in the hey, 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 they're in the dark somewhere. Um, welcome to the uh, Good Life Meditation for the fourth day of October 2016. Realize that the uh, volumes, the sounds a little, you know, the quality is not so good on the freeway here. Maybe I'll get one of those external mic things that I can plug into the phone and uh, see how that helps. Anyway, I'm change lanes. The uh, Good Life Meditation is uh, a chance, an opportunity during my morning commute to reflect on my uh, principles and values, my objectives for uh, life and for the day, and uh, to forecast a little bit about the challenges that I might face so that I can handle them better as they come up. And I like to begin with a... Uh, uh, not a forecast, but a retrocast. Is that even a word? Looking back at uh, last night and uh, remembering uh, something that I read or heard in a, in a podcast, perhaps, about the cautions of alcohol. You know, a lot of what I'm doing with this these daily meditations, and I've been doing it for, you know, gosh, it's been six months about now, maybe? Daily, maybe more. And it really makes a difference. It's to the point now that uh, I, haven't, I haven't quite got to the point where I recognize, as I think it was Epicurus maybe, who, who would say that when the challenges, or maybe it was Seneca, who would say that when the challenges arose, when, the cha when, the, when, the, when life threw that, threw that unexpected curveball, and he would say, uh, this is what I was training for, this is what I was practicing for, these daily efforts for that. I haven't reached that point yet, but I definitely have reached the point where I, when I start to feel the emotions running away, I can, you know, kind of rein those in and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's time to exercise some good emotional reaction, which is the primary thing. Boy, that's, that's a wonderful thing. I've never been one who flies off the handle with one extreme emotion or the other, but you can let it run away. You, you know, you can feel that impulse, that anxiety, you know, anger or frustration or confusion, and you kind of run with it. And before long, you, 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 you like a samurai. You've gutted yourself, or worse yet, you've gutted somebody else, and you created a, a bloody mess. Not literally, you know, or not even that bad, but you just you made things worse than than they need to be. At work, at home, at play, or whatever the case may be. And I'm. I've, Definitely, in six months, gone to the point where I can, I can uh, arrest that in process, and uh, in almost all cases, uh, uh, avoid that. Except last night, and I know what the culprit was, and I know that there was a uh, somebody's words I read that were, was warning about alcohol. But the warning actually was that I think it, maybe it was Marx warning that. Uh, you know, alcohol is a, is a form of, induces a form of escape to another world. I think it may have been Marx. It was talk, similar to talking about uh, how religion is kind of an, an, an alternate world. You know, to deal with the frustrations here, you, you create this, uh, this alternate place that you can uh, appeal to. And uh, with alcohol, you can even uh, fly to it, so to speak. Literally, <laughs> if you have enough, you can really fly to it. But the, the dangerous thing that I, I discovered last night was that that, that new cautionary uh, awareness that I have to spot the spot the the thing that I'm training for so that I can uh, exercise good emotional reactions that capacity is diminished with alcohol I had what might be characterized as a, a bit of an argument with my life, wife last night you know it was you know she and I really don't have arguments so to speak we you know, kind of have emotional discussions very infrequently but it does happen and last night it was, uh, and it's in almost every single case, it's precipitated by uh, a communication failure. What you'd think would happen more often with an interracial, intercultural cu couple, where we're, we're coming from two languages, and essentially we were communicating in English, but that's why I, you know, I applaud her, you know, and, and apologize to her. I applaud her ability to communicate in English and apologize for my inability to do the same in Japanese. She's always, she's always on, I'm always on the home turf when, when we're having those heavy discussions. She's always the visitor and I, I do uh, 
I do, I do, uh, I feel sorry for that and I do appreciate it and I try to always be cognizant of that, especially when mo emotions are involved. But it almost, it's also a good thing. It may also be a part of the reason why we've been around together for so darn long is that we can't assume it for things very often culturally and we talk a lot about, about trying to talk things through. But last night we had a, we had a, uh, an emotional discussion that was all hinged on a, on a misunderstanding. Literally, one of us said X and the other interpreted Y. And that led to Z, which was a, an, an unhappy, you know, an unhappy discussion about, you know, well, why would, why would, when you, we agreed on X, why did, well, we agreed that X was the good thing, why did Y happen? And it took us, it took us a while to figure it out. And I know exactly what happened, and I and I let my emotions go away a little bit. I didn't yell or hit or anything like that, but I, 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 I we, we fueled it. We continued on until finally I realized what the thing was, and we were able to straighten it out, but not before you know more hurt feelings, all for a ridiculous misunderstanding. And I realized that it was the alcohol that had. I had only had um, a glass and a half of wine, but that's enough for me because I'm such a lightweight. I very I don't I don't drink very much at all, but I had it had dropped my um, the critical faculties, and I and I and I'll tell you that was almost enough to, to send me off the wagon altogether, uh, uh, send me on the wagon forever. Maybe not you know not completely, but or at least because I do like a, a drink uh, in the evening. It's kind of nice to to drop the inhibition, get onto. YouTube and post videos that I would never otherwise post. <laughs> like last night's 360 degree post with a granite, dead granite mountain. I was like, what the, I called Badlands. What in the heck was I thinking posting that video? I mean, there's nothing to it. Although, if you look at it, but see, there is. Because then I looked at it, and then because of the alcohol, I saw that you know, I'm looking at the dead bones of a mountain eroded into sand after 1.4 billion years of exposure. I mean, that's a deep thing. And, all in, you know, a 30 second spin on a camera. So I guess it was worthwhile. See, see, the alcohol can have a good benefit because it can prompt you to, to go forward with something that you intuitively know is a good thing, but your reasonable side, I would probably say, why would I post that? It's a ridiculous video. There you go. But it also has the drawback of, of um, making me less capable of, uh, of, of invoking good emotional reactions. Like since I don't, clearly I don't drink at work and I'm, I'm really able. I'm really able able to do that now at work. Really, really helped a lot. So, just wanted to point that out. So, I guess I have two things. One, or, a couple of things I could do. I could not drink, or limit it more, or try to train myself to be on guard even when I'm under the influence. That would be kind of like uh, uh, a gymnast deciding that they're going to try to uh, learn to do the hot do do the balance bar while they're drunk. I wonder if I can pull that off. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, okay, let's get on with it. Path of Wildness uh, meditation. Where did that come from? That's what I used to call this. It's a good life meditation. For three components. First is the uh, assertion of uh, human rights. Second is uh, the objectives, three objectives, and the third is the seven principles. First, um, an ob uh, observation of human rights: the uh, good of the the good of the uh, of, of the individual shall not be uh, um, surrendered for the good of the. Uh, uh, it's not. I'm trying to figure some clean way to say that. There's not a way to, to say that because there are there are cases where the good of the individual should be or may be. Uh, sacrifice for the good of the many. That's not what I mean. What I should say is that the rights of the individual should be, should not be sacrificed. Though the rights of how do you say that? The rights in, individuals have rights. Statement is that enough? And I, I absent of uh, another of my own codified set, I just turn to the uh, Bill of Rights. Although some of them have nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but some of them, they, they basically uh, protect the freedom of the, uh, they, they protect the individual from the, from the, from the, um, from the many. Uh, this will work, I'll work out, but that's what this is all about, right? This daily thing. 
slowly, you know, building it up. Like this wasn't even a component two weeks ago. Now it's in there. I'll get it. Assuming I live long enough. <laughs> okay. Two uh, uh, objectives are there. Uh, no, the uh, yeah, the objectives. The first objective is the uh, development of good sound principles for life. The second objective is the cultivation of good emotional reactions, as I was saying before. And the third objective is the uh, uh, the performance of good actions. See a piece of litter on the ground? Pick it up. <laughs> Drive the speed limit if you can. Save some, save some gas. Save some. Avoid some pollution. You get it, right? Okay, here we go. Three objectives. Ah, I already talked about that. Okay, now seven principles. First is the uh, atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, flowing and changing, ever transforming into something else. What you are today is something you weren't yesterday and you won't be tomorrow. Sounds strange. The, <laughs> you ready for that change. Two, the uh, uh, principle of uh, nature. Everything has a nature in the universe by, in, by virtue of its composition, its uh, inclination, and its uh, trajectory. Uh, <laughs> what's your nature? When you figure it out, live according to it. You'll live a happier life and a better life, I think. Uh, next is a social principle. Human beings are social animals. We need one another. It's in our best interest and the best interest of society to uh, abide social ends. I love the fact that at this point in my life, I'm a public social, a civil servant working to improve social welfare of individuals. I have a very dull job for the most part. I spend my days as a project manager and a business systems analyst um, managing rank and file activities that, that do things like uh, upgrade operating systems for people's, for, you know, for eight entire agencies uh, here in this county. Very dull work, but you know what? In the end of the day, it's a good thing because it helps to improve the speed at which uh, so services can be provided, that uh, children can get help, uh, old people um, can, can, can receive the benefits that they need, uh, people on the streets can get, get access to resources that can uh, help them you know, lift themselves from their situation, or, or at least not suffer, suffer, at least suffer less. I love being a part of that. I really do. I love going to work. And that's, that's all because of the social, that's social principle, right? I feel like I'm doing something, something truly valuable, even though no one will ever know my name in this, uh, in, the, in this field, I'm, I'm a nameless uh, soldier. It really feels good at the end of the day. That's a really good thing. And I know it is good. Likewise, any other, uh, you know, social end, which is a strange thing, because I'm not a social guy, you know? I don't have really, I really don't have friends. Don't, don't do stuff with people. I, I don't, my day is off. I, if it's not with my wife and daughter, which I do like being with them, but if it's not with them, I'd rather just be alone in the desert. But I do, yeah, I'm kind of I'm diverging off. I do appreciate those social ends. And I think it's valuable enough to be the third principle of, of my principles. <laughs> Probably one of the more important ones. Next, four, um, temperance. The ability to um, control consumption. There's two components to that. One is the actual act of exercising control, which is uh, like working out, man. It's like working out. It's like uh, coming back to that whole thing, that whole preamble this morning. That ability to uh, to spot something that is happening and to be able to control its expression, whether it be not choosing to not have a, a second donut or even a donut, any donut at all when those donuts appear to work, not to uh, drink too much alcohol, or uh, go to walk too far when I'm playing in the mountains to you know to uh, end, up, end up getting in a bad situation, or um, to running away with my emotions when I feel slighted by somebody, or uh, when uh, uh, when there's a misunderstanding with my wife, and uh, you know we're tempted to uh, tempted to uh, linger on the hurt and the misunderstanding instead of uh, arresting that in place and say, wait a minute, I'm going to exercise a little temperance here. Let's uh, stop for a second, take a breath, and uh, figure out what's what's going on here. It's, wow, that's a powerful skill. Uh, 
breaks all of a sudden. Next uh, is the uh, principle of the great indifference, right? There is no God. The universe, or at least, that's a strong statement and not the statement I, mean, I meant to say. I, I see no evidence for, I see no good evidence for there being a God and I reject the God claim. That, with that statement, then I see a universe without, apparently without any type of uh, such an oversight. It leaves us just us. We got each other, right? Go out in the wilderness, look out at it, look at the uh, nothing that uh, yawns out before you for in an in, in a seeming infin, infinite expanse. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome, terrible thing at the same time. Frightening, downright. And it's a good thing to realize, because then you realize that all we have is one another, and maybe our dogs and cats. And of course, all the other animals and plants here, we'd be dead without them. <laughs> it's all not about us, anyway. And anyway, off to the next one. Six, uh, reason, the governing faculty, the way that we know what is true, the way we identify... Uh, 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 true things from false things, of course, because we want to believe as many real things, believe as many true things as possible. So we look at the facts, we see what's happening in the world, we catalog these things, we come up with uh, arguments that ex that explain them and that generate uh, prediction conclusions and predictions about the universe, and then we see if those predictions come true. And if they do, then that reinforces that what we, well, the, the, the presumptions that we've developed. The, uh, are in fact true. And we go forward with a little more um, certitude. Always aware and always ready to uh, change that should uh, new evidence prove otherwise. Reason, the governing faculty. And finally, seven. The reason, the purpose for life, as I see it, virtue. Being good. The virtue is simply designed as the objective uh, uh, improvement and well-being for uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything, even rocks, yeah, even rocks, I guess. Although we uh, spend less time dwelling on the well-being of rocks as we might uh, the well-being of, uh, of uh, children, uh, harp seals. <laughs> oh, no. Bees, we better be concerned about the well-being of bees and, in fact, the ecosystem in general. So if we can agree that, uh, if we can agree that uh, well-being is uh, the, is the, the well-being is important, then we have something that we can objectively measure. And we can then you know, move forward using our reason to identify what really makes sense for the, for the improvement of well-being and then moving forward with that. So, uh, virtue is achieved through a life of uh, recognizing the transient nature of everything, the impermanence of uh, everything that is, the changing nature, that uh, uh, what we are today is something different tomorrow. I we already said that stuff. The ability to uh, to recognize our recognize our own and the nature of others, and to live accordingly, to uh, pursue social social ends, to exercise restraint, to uh, rec identify and uh, and acknowledge the great indifference, and to use reason as the governing faculty. So I've completed my meditation. Let me just now do a little bit of a forecast for today, without giving any uh, necessary details out. I'm headed in, uh, I'm about an hour and uh, hour and 20 minutes away from a big meeting, a couple of hours uh, meeting. Uh, it's, everybody in the kitchen sink is going to be there. I think really the, I saw that on the invite. The kitchen sink is, is even, actually on this invite, there was even employees that are no longer with the with the agency. <laughs> they moved on. They were invited too, so this is an important meeting. <laughs> what if they're going to show up? <laughs> so anyway, uh, and I'm a little anxious because um, I'm the project manager for this, but this is a one of two, but this is a sub-activity uh, of it, and one in which um, I believe that the other the others should be performing a leading role. In fact, the, the, the meeting is initiated by others, so I have to kind of walk a line, because I'm the kind of guy that will jump in and kind of run things, but I have to step back and uh, simply observe, uh, ask pointed questions, ask, you know, got questions that may guide us, to, because I know what the deliverable is for this meeting, to try and ask questions that will help elicit that, deliver, that deliverable uh, without uh, taking over the whole darn thing, you know, it's not my role in this one. Um, 
And overall, I'm very anxious because this whole project's a very scary, big, giant, scary, hairy, hairy. It's not a mess yet, <laughs> but it's a big, giant, hairy, scary thing. And uh, this is the time of the time when you're going into work. Like, ah, I'd rather not be going into work. I'd rather, I'd rather be going to the beach. <laughs> so watch out, Mr. Lexus. Stay in your lane. So, um, so let me forecast a little bit. Today's a day where I'm going to be uh, involved in activities where uh, I will be uh, challenged to maintain my organizational and my, even though I'm not a manager, my management, my, you know what I mean, my managerial capabilities to shepherd them into the appropriate place so that I'm doing the right job for the right moment, I'm the right tool, the right instrument at the right time. I will also uh, uh, need to balance uh, activities. I have way more work than I can handle and um, I have a more, more, meeting, more another big meeting tomorrow that I need to prepare for. I need to not be frustrated. I need to contain my emotion as I realize that I don't have enough time through the day. There's also a possibility that another emergency thing may arise that I may be uh, called into that I'm not even a part of. It may take my time away and I have to uh, be able to, to catalog that and then communicate that information if I'm having a time crunch, communicate that information to my supervisor and, and ask for help in better balancing the, uh, my time. Other than that, I uh, might have things where, uh, you know, uh, unexpected things will happen. Someone might cut in front of me, like that Lexus guy, and in which case I want to uh, not run with the emotions of anger or frustration, but instead, like I did just now, recognize that I was happening, back off the throttle, let that person in, let that kind of flow around, um, not avoiding it and not, uh, unnecessarily engaging it, not provoking it as well. And then when I get home, I left my, I left my, my wife a nice note apologizing for uh, last night for the confusion that we had. When I get home, I'm going to engage with my family. I'm going to uh, not let the fatigue of the day simply unwind as soon as I enter the door. I want to help my daughter with her homework. I want to be there for her. I'm not going to engage any drink tonight. I may not be doing that for a while and if I do I'm going to try I'm going to do that in such a way that it's uh, after I've done my uh, finished my parental duties such as helping my daughter with her homework because there is a difference I'm more there I sh it's not, I'm not as good at that and I'm tired when I'm having a sip of wine and helping her with her homework because the wine makes me tired I want to be there instead I'll have a cup of coffee and something else I've been doing I've been keeping a little list of uh, topics to talk about at dinner which, which worked last well last night until we got off on that thing do that, continue that, do my exercise, not be, uh, not be uh, overly uh, frustrated by the amount of stuff on my shoulders, be uh, glad for what I've got, the, the opportunities that I have, and for the uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful thing of my family, and the opportunity to live this life. There we go. 23 minutes. I think I've uh, done enough. I've done my uh, forecast. I've done my uh, my preamble, my uh, meditation, and my daily forecast. Now, like I tell my driving students, come to a full stop. We'll feel the car go back. Take a breath, and then continue on. See you later. Bye bye. Have a great day yourself. See you.